You can use this video as a formula for picking components anytime you want. Because today I'm gonna explain how to choose PC parts in a way that's very structured, simple, so even a 7 year old could understand it, and fast, so you don't waste your time. Now let's get started. At some point in your life, you've probably thought about building a PC. Because, you know, it's that peak thing that lets you do anything, from gaming to heavy creative work. Everyone wants a PC, but buying a pre-built one usually isn't worth it. And to build it yourself, you need some knowledge, which as a beginner, you probably don't have. So today, I'm gonna explain in the simple way possible how to pick components that work together perfectly and are well balanced. Step 1. Before picking parts, you need to figure out what you're building the PC for. And that's really important, because it helps you understand where most of your money should go. And usually, you've got three main reasons. Gaming, editing or heavy tasks, and basic stuff like doing homework, watching YouTube, using simple programs, and so on. Step 2. Once you've decided what you want your PC to do, your next step is to split your budget between all the parts. And here's something you need to get. There are 8 essential parts that make a PC actually work. The processor is like the brain of your computer. The graphics card is like the artist. The motherboard holds all the parts together. RAM helps your PC remember things while you're working. The power supply takes the energy from the outlet and distributes it to all your components. Storage keeps all your files, games, folders everything. The case is just a box that holds all your parts. And the fans keeps everything from overheating. So now you know what's what and why you'll need to buy at the store. But hold on, don't rush yet. Because now you'll need to break down your budget by percentage. Basically, you need to decide how much of your total money goes to each part. Let's say your parents gave you $1,000 to build your PC. There are CPUs that cost $100 and others that go up to $1,000. If you go all in on a super expensive processor, you won't have any money left for the other parts. But if you go too cheap, it won't even run your favorite game. So you've got to slice that $1000 like a pizza into 8 pieces. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it sounds. Look, here's a simple chart that shows the percentage range you can spend on each part. For the processor, for example, you can go for 20-25% of your budget. So that's $200-250 out of your $1000. For the graphics card, you can spend 30-40%, so around $300-$400. For the motherboard, aim for 10-15%, which would be about $100-$150 and so on. Of course, these aren't fixed numbers. If you want to upgrade one part like the graphics card, you can save money on another part. Or you can throw in some extra cash to get the part you really want. But this kind of budget breakdown is a great starting point for planning. One thing I'll say though, don't try to save money on everything, especially the or supply. A bad PCU can mess up your whole budget. If it fries or something goes wrong, you could lose everything. But don't worry, I'll show you how to choose each part so that everything fits together smoothly, like clockwork. Step 3. To choose all your parts in sync, you'll need to put in a bit of effort, especially if your budget is big. The more money you have, the more options you get, which makes it harder to figure out which components match well and which don't. Let's start with the processor and graphics card. Before we dive into how to choose your processor and graphics card, a quick word from today's sponsor, casefan.com. If you're building a PC or just looking to upgrade your system, casefan offers genuine Windows and Microsoft Office case at some of the lowest prices online. Whether it's Windows 11, Windows 10, or even Office 2019, 2021, or 365, they've got you covered. Right now, you can get 50% of all Windows versions using the code AMAN50 and 62% of all Microsoft Office products with the code AMAN62. The process is super easy. Head to casefan.com using the link in the description. Add the product to your cart. Apply the coupon code that matches your item. Complete the purchase using PayPal or credit card. Again, that's AMAN50 for Windows and AMAN62 for Office. Check out casefan.com, links in the description. Now let's get back to building your PC. If you're building a PC for work, you'll need to put more of your budget into the processor. And that's because a lot of programs don't really care about pretty visuals like a graphics card offers. The processor is what handles the calculations and geometry, the brain work. In simple terms, in a game, the processor first figures out where the trees or characters should be. Then the graphics card makes it all look nice based on that information. So the processor is in charge of the math side of things. 
But if you're building a gaming PC, then most of your budget should go to the graphics card. Still, that doesn't mean you should go with a weak processor. They need to work together in harmony. To figure out if they match well, just check game or benchmark tests for that GPU or CPU. The GPU should be running at close to 100% usage in those tests. That means they are balanced. You can find this info pretty much everywhere, especially on YouTube. Or if that's confusing, you can test your compatibility on a website, where you choose your CPU, GPU, and the resolution you plan to play on, like Full HD or 2K, and then click Proceed to Calculation. It'll show you a bottleneck percentage. If it's over 5%, that means the GPU and CPU aren't a perfect match. But even then, don't rely on that number too much. There's no such things as perfect compatibility. Some games use more CPU, some more GPU. You can even ask ChatGPT whether your CPU and GPU are a good combo for a specific game. And it'll tell you. I'll leave a link to that bottleneck calculator site in the description too. Now about processors. There are two main companies, AMD and Intel. They are a little different in how they name things. Right now, AMD mainly makes Ryzen CPUs for both gamers and professionals. They are divided into performance tiers, Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9. It's super easy. The higher the number, the better. But you'll also notice a generation number and an index. The generation is a number after the tier, like 1000, 2000, 3000, 5000, 7000, and so on. Again, higher is better. Sometimes a lower tiered CPU from a newer generation can be better than a higher tiered CPU from an older generation. For example, a Ryzen 7 from the 2000 series is roughly equal to a Ryzen 5 from the 3000 series, or a Ryzen 3 from the 5000 series. Of course, that's not always exact, but it's a good rule of thumb. Then there are the letters at the end. These are indexes. If it has an X, that means the CPU can be overclocked. A G means it has integrated graphics, so your PC can run without a graphic card. But the built-in graphics are weak. X3D means it's a high-end CPU with top-tier specs. If there's no letter, it's just a standard CPU. Not bad, just standard. Intel works in a similar way, but with a few differences. Their performance tiers are also i3, i5, i7, and i9. The generations work the same way, but right now they're on the 14th generation, and they release a new one pretty much every year. The only real difference is in the indexes. Intel uses K, F, KF, and T. K means the processor is unlocked for overclocking. F means there's no built-in GPU. KF is a combo of both. It can be overclocked but doesn't have integrated graphics. T is just a power efficient, lower performance version. If there's no letter, it's a standard CPU. But by default, most Intel CPUs include integrated graphics, which makes them more expensive than the F versions. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about CPUs. Now let's talk about the graphics card. Graphics cards are actually one of the easiest parts to pick. To figure out which GPU is more powerful, just check gaming benchmarks and that's enough. There are three companies, AMD, Nvidia, and Intel, and they all work kind of the same. Nvidia has the 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 series, and those numbers basically show the generation. For example, RTX 4070 is roughly equal to RTX 3080. You don't have to dive into deep into understanding all that. Just watch test results in games and you'll be fine. Alright, now let's move on to the motherboard. Once you've picked your processor and graphics card, the next step is choosing your motherboard. This part is a bit more complex, but that doesn't mean you need to stress out. First, you'll want to look at the motherboards that match your overall budget. Then, in your stores filter, you need to select the socket type that matches your CPU. Just to clarify, the socket is the part in the center of the motherboard where the CPU is installed. And as I said earlier, CPUs come from two companies. The difference is that AMD CPUs have a bunch of tiny pins on the bottom, while Intel CPUs don't. Intel's pins are actually in the motherboard itself, super simple. So when you're picking a motherboard socket, just check what kind your CPU needs. If it's an AMD, you're usually looking at an AM4 or AM5 socket. They look like this. If you got an Intel processor, then the socket the socket will start with LGA followed by some numbers, like LGA 1700 or LGA 2011. There are a lot of them, but honestly, you don't need to memorize all of them. When you pick your processor, the socket type is listed in the specs. Once you've filtered by budget and socket, you'll probably only have a few options left, maybe more if your budget is bigger. From there, you just choose the motherboard based on its chipset. The chipset basically determines how powerful your setup can be. It decides what your motherboard is capable of. 
off, like whether you can overclock your CPU or RAM, what ports are available, whether it supports newer GPUs or RAM, and so on. Now, you don't need to go super deep into this, since this video is just covering the basics, so I'll keep it quick. AMD chipsets usually have a letter at the beginning. There are three main levels. A is the most budget-friendly, like A320 or A520. B is mid-range, like B450 or B550. And X is the premium level, like X470 or X570. A series is very basic, no overclocking, not many features, and is the best for browsing or office work. B series is mid-range, decent features, supports overclocking, and works great for most setups. X series is the high-end one, with everything unlocked, but it's not really worth it if you're building a budget PC because of the price. Now for Intel, the same basic concept applies, but the letters are a bit different. H series is the budget line, and honestly it's kind of trash for gaming, even worse than AMD's A series in terms of compatibility and support. Then there's B series, which is the mid-range, and Z series, which is the premium one, just like AMD's X series. Hopefully that clears up chipsets for you. If you're building a high-end PC, you should also check your motherboard's limits, like the max amount of RAM it supports and the highest RAM speed it can handle. For example, if you buy 128GB of RAM but your motherboard only supports 64GB, you're basically wasting half of your RAM's potential, so don't forget to check that. But overall, picking a motherboard isn't too hard. Let's move on to RAM. Technically, you should choose your RAM after picking your motherboard, since you'll need to match its limits. But in most cases, your motherboard will support the RAM you want anyway, so don't worry too much. Budget-wise, just set aside about 10% of your total budget for RAM, and that'll give you an idea of how much you can get. These days, for gaming, 16GB is an absolute minimum, but again, it depends on your budget. Here's a quick tip for RAM. Always buy two sticks instead of one. So if you're getting 16GB, go with two 8GB sticks instead of one 16GB stick. These active dual channel mode, which gives better performance. Another thing, the higher RAM frequency, the better the performance, so go for the highest speed your budget and motherboard allow. You might also see something called timing, usually marked with CL followed by numbers. The lower those numbers, the better. But don't stress too much about this. If the RAM looks good and has a slightly higher timing, it's still totally fine. That's pretty much all you need to know for RAM. Now let's on to the super important part choosing the power supply unit. Picking a power supply is a really important step. It's basically the heart of your PC. If you choose a good one, your system will run for years without problems. But if you go cheap or choose a bad brand, you could fry your whole system and waste all your money. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how much power in watts your system needs. Just search PCU calculator on Google, or to make it easy, I'll leave a link to the one from the Be Quiet in the description. All you need to do is enter your CPU, GPU, and how much RAM you plan to use, and it'll tell you how many watts your system needs. Once you get the number, add an extra 100 or 200 watts for safety, and a buy a PSU with the wattage. But also, don't just grab any random no-name brand. Pay attention to the brand and the PSU's 80 plus rating. It should be at least bronze. Silver, gold or platinum is even better. The higher the rating, the more efficient it is. I'll show trusted PSU brands on screen. Stick with those. One last thing. If you have the chance to buy a high quality PSU, don't cheap out, even if it doesn't affect performance directly. Think of your PC like a living organism. The PSU is its heart. If it's solid, everything else can thrive. Okay, let's talk about storage now. Choosing storage isn't that hard. Basically, just get the biggest size you can afford within your budget. But here's the key thing. If your budget lets you, never go with an HDD over an SSD. Your nerves and time are worth more than saving a little money. SSDs are way faster. When it comes to SSDs, all you need to know is the faster, the better. You'll find the speed listed on the product description. Also, SSDs come in two types, NVMe and SATA. If your motherboard supports NVMe, go for it. It's way faster than regular SATA SSDs. You can check your motherboard specs to see what it supports. Let's move on to the cooler. 
Choosing a CPU cooler is super easy. You've got two main options, air coolers and liquid coolers. The difference is that air coolers are cheaper but noisier and slightly less efficient. That doesn't mean they are bad though. Even for expensive builds, sometimes an air cooler is a better choice. When choosing a cooler, just check your CPU's TDP, thermal design power. It tells you how much heat the CPU produces. Your cooler just needs to be rated for a TDP higher than that. That's it. Let's talk about the case. Picking a PC case isn't hard either. The main thing, of course, is your budget. Like I mentioned earlier, allocate about 3-5% of your total budget for your case. Then pick one that you like the look of. One important thing to check is whether your components actually fit inside the case. Start with your motherboard size. They usually come in mini ITX, micro ATX and ITX. Mini ITX fits in any case. Micro ATX won't fit in mini ITX cases. And ATX fits only in ATX compatible cases. Simple. Also check the GPU length and cooler height to make sure everything fits in the case. These specs are listed in the product descriptions for the cooler, GPU and case. One last tip, try to get a case where the PCU is installed at the bottom. Some older cases have the PCU at the top, which is not efficient because it pulls in hot air. Those cases still exist in very cheap builds, but it's good to know the difference. That's pretty much it for picking a case. Hopefully, now you understand how to choose all the PC parts for your build and won't feel lost doing it. The most important mindset is to treat your PC like a living organism. Every part plays a vital role, just like organs in a body. Once you understand that, everything starts to make sense really quickly. I tried to explain everything in this video so that you could pick your parts on your own without having to ask someone else for help. I hope it helped you out. Take care.